You're watching Telecom TV from the MEF annual members meeting in Boston. I'm joined now by Dan Blemings, who is Director of Ethernet Product Management at AT&T Mobile and Business Solutions. Dan, thanks for joining us again on Telecom TV. Um, can I start by asking you, what are some of the new innovative services that AT&T has introduced recently? Great question, Guy, and we've had a lot of innovation coming out of AT&T this, this last year, and in particular, we've had a lot of big announcements the past two months that have come out. So um, let's start with Ethernet qualification. We uh, just today announced that we've created a new Ethernet qualification capability for our wholesale customers. And what this does is it's an API-driven tool. And once given to our wholesale providers, and they onboard it into their systems, they can now instantly determine Ethernet services within our footprint. Now, to put that in context a bit, that process used to take weeks and months for them to come over, send us a request, have us go figure out what was available, validate it, send it back, tell them what the speeds are. We've now turned that weeks, months process into seconds. So that's the power that APIs are delivering to AT&T today. We're happy to extend that to our wholesale customers. And is this something that's come out of the work that you've been doing alongside the MEF or on LSO? It is. So if you think about um, transforming your business, and AT&T's been very vocal about we're going to transform our business from a, a hardware-based network to a software-based network. Things like APIs are, are top of mind, and APIs are one of the enablers that help you do that. So yes, we're going to look at different pictures or models throughout the industry to help figure out what makes sense. And what we really liked about the MEF is they have a picture, a very easy to understand, digest digestible picture of what it looks like to do qualification between two operators. They call that their LSO project. There's a picture of it um, in there called MEF 55. And it shows a flow that says, how do I look into another carrier, determine what's available, and send the information back? Now, we didn't use MEF code. It's all AT&T code that we've used. But that vision of how to do it was very much linked to what the MEF is doing. Now, another um, innovative service that's generating a lot of interest at the moment is your e-comp product and right. the fact that you're, you're, you're opening this up. Right. So, very big announcement from AT&T. E-comp is um, our capability, our platform. You could call it our SDN-enabled platform that allows us to offer services on demand to our customer base. And e-comp is... Um, showing us what can be done with not only APIs, but SDN and NFE. So if you think about it, you know, you have NFE that uh, disaggregates hardware into software. You have SDN that then controls that software, and we create these things called VNFs or virtual network functions. And, and the term we use within AT&T is that you can basically spin up with a VNF, you can spin up a product on demand. And then we're using APIs to actually expose the customer to controls that can actually do things for their product, like toggle bandwidth up and down on demand. So eComp and us opening it up to the open source community is really doing something that we've never done before, but we felt that it was imperative that we do so. We wanted to give the industry a shot of adrenal adrenaline to help them see what we're doing, help them understand what we're doing, but most importantly, drive compatibility. Because at the end of the day, we all need to be able to order from each other to turn up our services no matter where they are around the globe. And we thought it would be faster and more innovative if we did this as an ecosystem. We're hoping the industry will plug into eComp, they'll understand eComp, and then they'll contribute back and say, hey, AT&T, this is fantastic. Have you thought about doing something different over here they may have a fantastic idea that we'll adopt. So we're going to spur innovation across the industry as we open up uh, eComp into the open source community. Now, is this a platform-based approach you're taking? 
By platform, do you mean that it's a, a set of systems or that it, there's a box behind it? That's there's a, a set of systems. Set of, yes, it, it is a platform-based system. So if you think about um, the different uh, uh, layers of e-comp, I'll call it that. You know, there's a, there's a layer that does qualification. We talked about that a bit earlier with how do you qualify. There's a layer that does provisioning. There's a layer that does, you know, billing. There's a layer that does service qualification. So there's a bunch of different platforms, right, that uh, create an end-to-end -end Ethernet service. So sharing that with the open source community and the Linux Foundation, by the way, is a great way to help others tap into that knowledge base. Is this part of, of, of a trend at the moment where service providers and carriers are, are looking to take perhaps more control over interworking and standards rather than rely on a perhaps less prescriptive vendor-based approach? Mm, good question. So, you know, we're at this iteration in technology where we're saying we need to make this next leap. And we certainly are working hand in hand with the standards bodies to do that. Um, we, AT&T actually collaborates with, you know, I say this um, carefully, many standards bodies. We have people, peers like me that go around and sit in and look at what they're doing. And one of the things that um, we realized when we all came back internally and reported out on what our particular standards body was doing, was that there, there were very different approaches being looked at across the industry. Um, not only were there different approaches as to how the next generation services should be built, but there were different approaches as to the very fundamental underlying technologies that were going to run it. Were they going to be Yang based? Were they going to be REST based? Were they going to be Tosca, Heat? It, 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 people were not in consensus and we came back and said, you know what, why not do a white paper? Release it to the industry, tell them what our plans are and get their feedback and say, you know, AT&T, yes, we think this is a good idea. AT&T, maybe we don't think it's a good idea. But we did, we released a white paper, we sought the feedback of the industry, and the response was overwhelmingly positive, not just from service providers, but from standards bodies and vendors all across the board. People came back and said, AT&T, we think this is a good thing for you to do. And it's critical that we do it right. And that's why we've worked with the Linux Foundation to put it out into the open source. And that's why we're working with an integrator Amdocs to make sure that there's structure around it as well. You just mentioned they're working with, with an integrator, Amdocs. Um, why is that? You want to encourage more, more telcos and, and more cloud providers to, to, to tie into your work? Well, we see it this way. Think of eComp, as you said earlier, is a platform and it's millions of lines of code. And when you take something that massive, and try to put it out into the industry, there needs to be some sort of structure around it so that people can organize, catalog it, know specifically what they're changing, and then report back to others where in those millions of lines of code you've, you've made a change. So, so key to success when you do a large open source project like this is having an integrator to uh, help track and catalog the changes that are going out there. And one other, one other important thing to mention is that some companies don't have um, the technical depth in order to make a transition like this. So being able for them to go to Amdocs and say, can you help me with this is important. We want the entire industry to make this change, to move with us. We don't want anybody to be left behind. So working with Amdocs will also help us do that. And one more final thing about Amdocs is that you don't have to go to Amdocs. You could go right to the Linux Foundation and still go that way. So we're trying to open the playing field so that everybody has an opportunity to take advantage of what we're doing. Excellent. Dan, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome.